ABN, TFN, ATO, GST. What are these things? It is tax time here in Australia, people. And most of the international students scratch their head to understand the tax system here in Australia. Yes, it is complicated. So in this video, I'll try to make it easier for you by explaining the tax system here in Australia for international students with an example as well. So if you want to know what other things you need to be mindful of regarding taxes in Australia, including how to calculate one, please stick around till the end. Now, before we get started with today's video, it's important to understand that this information is general in nature and not constant a financial advice. I'm not a financial accountant so if you have a specific question regarding your own tax return I highly recommend you to speak to a registered taxation agent for that. Now that being done let's move on to the video. You ready? Let's go. So first thing first it's important to understand the financial year in Australia. So the financial year here in Australia starts from the 1st of July and ends on 30th of June each year and once the financial year ends on 30th of June everyone start preparing for their tax returns. So basically all the money you earned during the financial year you will need to report that via a tax return and for lodging your own tax return the last date is 31st of October each year so usually if you're doing your own tax return you need to make sure you lodge it by this date if you want extra time to lodge a tax return we'll talk about that in bit later parts as well now, apart from understanding these financial year dates and the last day of lodging your tax return it's important to understand the difference when working on TFN or ABN so TFN stands for tax file number and ABN stands for Australian business number and as an international student you could be working on any of these numbers so if you are working on TFN you usually work as an employee of the business however if you are working with an ABN then most likely you are either running your own business or you are working as a subcontractor or as a partner rather than working as an employee and usually with TFN you get a weekly or fortnightly or monthly pay slip but with ABN you usually have to issue an invoice to the business you are working with and when working with TFN your employers usually take out the taxes before they put money into your bank account however if you're working with ABN you will need to manage your own taxes which means the business you are working with will pay your invoices in full then you have to calculate your own taxes based on that we actually have a whole video on the difference between ABN and TFN we'll link that in the description box below but don't watch it at the moment as we have plenty of other things to cover in this video itself now I want to address a couple of questions here that we get asked very often by our community so one of the first common question is do I need to count ABN hours when I'm calculating my work hours for each fortnight the short answer is yes whether you're working on TFN whether you work on ABN you will still need to count your own work hours the difference is that with TFN it's automatically counted your employer will give you a specific set number of hours each week or each fortnight but with ABN you work out your own work hours so as an example if I'm working as a freelancer I could be working 20 hours per week and based on my skill set I could be charging whatever amount I need to charge to my clients as an example if I'm a video editor I could be charging my clients $50 per hour for doing video editing for them some people may charge more some people may charge less but if I feel that my skill set and experience dictates that I could charge $50 per hour then I could but I still need to calculate the hours that I'm working in to make sure that I don't breach my student visa conditions one other question is in regards to uber eats how do I calculate my work hours when working with uber eats so usually when you log on to the platform they automatically start calculating or logging your hours in the app so literally you cannot breach your student visa conditions even if you are working with uber eats or any any other online delivery platform you need to make sure that you abide by your visa restrictions as some of you are aware that from 1st of July 2023 the work restrictions has come into place so Uber Eats DoorDash and any other online delivery platform will obviously have to count your work hours when you're logging in to those apps so I highly recommend you not to work over the limits that you have been allocated as per your student visa conditions moving on to the next part which is about understanding the difference between being a resident or non-resident for tax purposes this is a very important thing to understand as the taxes you're going to pay will depend upon whether you are a resident in Australia or you're non-resident in Australia because 
because if you are considered as a non-resident in Australia, you could be paying higher amount of taxes. And obviously, no one likes to pay higher taxes. Am I right? Now to determine whether you are resident or a non-resident for tax purposes, usually there is one test which is 183 day test. So this test is to see if you are residing in Australia for more than six months continuously. If you have lived in six months or more, then you are considered as a resident for tax purposes. Now on ADO's website, it's clearly mentioned that if you are an international student in Australia, you are coming to study here for a course which is six months or longer, then you are considered as a resident in Australia for taxation purposes, which is a good thing because effectively you are paying less taxes. So basically, if you are enrolled in a course or you're planning to study a course which is longer than six months, then you are resident in Australia for taxation purposes however if you are studying for a course which is shorter than six months and you're planning to leave before six months then you will be considered non-resident which means you will be paying higher taxes unfortunately now this thing leads us to the very important question how do I calculate my taxes and that is our next part so how much tax you will be paying will be depending upon how much money you have earned in that financial year remember the dates 1st July to 30th of June. So Australia uses progressive taxation system. Basically it means the more money you earn, the more taxes you need to pay. So in order to pay your taxes, there's a very simple formula you need to follow, which is all the income you have earned in a financial year, which can be from the money you have earned as a salary or wages, or if you have worked as a contractor or as a partner, or you earn money with interest, or even cryptocurrencies you need to include all this income and then you can deduct any work related expenses as your deductions and whatever is left over is your taxable income which means you will be paying taxes based on that now very important thing to note that international students usually don't have to pay Medicare levy on their taxable income usually if you are eligible to get a Medicare services then you will have to pay Medicare levy on your taxable income but as most of the international students are not eligible for Medicare services they don't need to pay Medicare levy but very importantly you will need to get a Medicare exemption certificate which is also known as Medicare entitlement statement from Services Australia so you need to apply for this Medicare entitlement statement before lodging your tax return and you can apply it for free from Services Australia's website we'll leave a link of that in the description box below for your reference now as I mentioned earlier that Australia uses progressive taxation system so as you income is increasing your tax will be increasing as well so they have got these tax tables where we can see how if your income is increasing how much taxes you will be paying so let's look at this resident tax rates for the year 2022 2023 so for the first eighteen thousand two hundred dollars there will be no taxes on your taxable income and that's the difference if you are a non-resident you will have to pay taxes on this eighteen thousand two hundred dollars as well if you are studying for more than six months or so then you don't have to worry about this so first eighteen thousand two hundred dollars is tax-free then from eighteen thousand two hundred dollars to forty five thousand dollars there is nineteen percent tax or nineteen cents for each dollar from forty five thousand dollars onwards till hundred and twenty thousand dollar you have to pay five thousand ninety two plus thirty two cents for every dollar you earn above forty five thousand dollars from hundred and twenty thousand to hundred and eighty thousand dollars you have to pay twenty nine thousand four hundred sixty seven plus thirty seven cents or thirty seven percent for every dollar you earn over 120,000 and last but not the least if you're earning more than hundred and eighty thousand dollars you will be paying fifty one thousand six hundred sixty seven dollars plus forty five cents of 45 percent of each dollar that you earn over hundred and eighty thousand dollars and this tax table does not include medicare levy which is two percent of the taxable income so as you have seen in this table as the income is increasing the taxes are increasing as well now to explain it better let's take an example of a student named john remember john from the last week's video it's the same john here again so scenario number one let's say john earned seventeen thousand dollars during this financial year so how much taxes he will be paying in this case as you know the first eighteen thousand two hundred dollars there is no taxes on that income so in this case his estimated tax will be zero 
Now while his estimated tax will be $0, it might be still better for him to lodge his tax return because his employer might have taken out some taxes from his salary. To claim that back, he should lodge his tax return even though he is not paying any taxes at all. Now in the scenario number two, let's say John earned $33,000 during the year. Now for this case, as you know, anything above $18,200 will be taxable. So first $18,200 is tax free. So from $33,000, we will deduct that $18,200. That will leave us with $14,800 and we will need to calculate taxes on this number. So as in the tax table again, anything above $18,200 we need to pay 19 cents or 19 percent of that income so in this case 14,800 multiplied by 19 percent that will leave us with 2,812 dollars that will be his estimated tax using the same sort of formula let's look at the third scenario where John is earning 55,000 dollars during a financial year using the same tax tables we used earlier his tax will be around 8,342 dollars again keep in mind that we did not consider any deductions from these numbers we did not include medicare levy just because we know international students don't have to pay medicare levy and we didn't consider any other offset you might be eligible for as well so this is just an estimated to give you an idea how much taxes you might be paying now that brings us to very important question which is about how to lodge your tax return so there are three main methods to lodge your tax return in australia the first one is diy which means do it yourself so for doing your own taxes return first thing first you will need a mygov account if you haven't got one you can create one and then once you have got your mygov account ready you will need to link that to ato australian taxation office and once you have linked your ato with mygov account then you can start lodging your tax return yourself the second method is using ato's tax help program now ato does offer a free tax help for lodging your tax return as well but there are some conditions in order to be eligible for this free tax help such as your income should not be more than sixty thousand dollars and you shouldn't have worked as a contractor whether it was with uber eats or doordash or with other platforms and there are many other eligibility criteria so you need to meet these eligibility criteria in order to get this free tax help however the last but not the least method is using your tax agent a registered tax agent who can help you with lodging your tax return I actually lodged my tax return with a registered taxation agent as well the reason being it is much more easier to give this information to the people who are expert in the industry they can usually work out what deductions you can actually claim and they can really give you advice if your things a bit complicated so in that case if you want to use a registered taxation agent we highly recommend you to check our friends at taxback we have partnered with them for this year again to bring you some really good deal in regards to lodging your tax return you can get more details about this using the link in the description box below we're also planning to run a webinar with them so if you're interested we'll leave a form for you to complete in the description box below as well please put your details if you're interested to know more about taxation system in australia in the last webinar that we ran last year we had nearly 200 people signed up for it so we will have some limited places available for the webinar that's upcoming and if you sign up using this form below we'll let you know when this webinar actually is we're still finalizing the date so hopefully it will be very soon now in order to lodge your tax return what do you actually need as well so if you're going to lodge your tax return with a registered tax agent usually one of the things you'll need is tfn your tax file number you will also need to have your abn number ready as well if you worked in a year using abn apart from that you may need things like payment summaries from your employers these days you may not even get payment summaries because most of the employers have to provide these details to the ato directly and it is usually pre-filled in your income over there then you may need invoices that you have issued for your ABN you may also need to have a receipts for any expenses that you have made you may have to bring sometimes bank statements also and some proof of ID as well and if you're lodging your tax return yourself you may need some of these documents anyways also so that was all about taxes in Australia now before we end this video very important tip here is that make sure that you report all your information and all all your income and expenses correctly and always 
keep the receipts for any expenses that you're making for your work and claim only the things that you can actually claim sometimes students do ask us whether they can claim their education expenses also it is a little bit tricky because it will depend upon whether your study is related directly for your work as well now I'm not gonna give you any advice on this because it is a very complicated thing so I highly recommend you to speak to a registered taxation agent for that and for that we'll leave the link of that in the description box for you now earlier I did mention about a student named John now we talked about John in one of our previous video where we told you on how much money an international student can earn in Australia from 1st of July 2023 we gave you very specific numbers in that example so if you want to know about it click this video over here and I will see you over there